Who wants to give you Pioneer decks? We do. We do. It's you, always you us. Me. It's always us. It's not a very interesting question to ask on this channel, apparently. The only people on Earth who want to give you Pioneer Day. Uh, yeah, it's wild. Uh, however, before we do that, uh, we we have a confession to make. We already recorded footage with this deck. Yeah. I played against MTG Malone, our guest for the month. We already played out to give you, Oliver, the winner of the deck originally to see if we could send it to you. But unfortunately, that footage is corrupted. Yeah. We cannot use it. This match is the only one that counts. Yeah, forget about the other match, it, it doesn't exist. Uh, this is the one that counts. If I win against you, Carl, today, Oliver, you get the deck. We just wrap it up, we ship send it, it to your you, way. or we throw it really hard. But, anyways, you get it in your hands. But if I win, you get 30 euro in card market credit, which is a consolidation price. We didn't want you to go empty handed, but, but we need real stakes. Yeah. Uh, this is not the only way we source our deck lists for the weekly show. We also take them from the comments below. So if you really want to see a modern or pioneer deck being played, head down to the comments, leave a comment there, and then we'll pick from those comments as to what we want to play. And while you're there, I can't tell you enough, if you're not subbed, please click that sub button. Most of you guys are not subbed to the channel yet, and that's the metric by which our bosses try to decide whether we could continue the channel or not. That's what they view. That's how they view. Right, true, so. true, true. We know all that already, but let's get into the games now. Today, I get to play the deck that Oliver sent in for our Budget Pioneer deck contest. That means if I win with the deck against Carl, uh, then we'll send out the deck to Oliver. Uh, that being said, the deck is a ramp deck that is focused around cheating big creatures into play either by, well, ramping into them or by casting Luka. Luka is a planeswalker, that, the one from Ikoria, that lets you cheat big creatures into play by exiling your smaller creatures. Um, so I'm hoping to hit a Dragonlord Artaka here. A card many of you might not know is Quartzwood Crasher, a 5 mana 6 6 trample creature that rewards you with huge dinosaur tokens once you hit your opponent with it or other trample creatures. Uh, in this deck, it serves as kind of a budget, really beat-down creature that kind of advances your board state higher and higher so your opponent can't keep up with it. I hope I can create some huge dinosaurs. The deck also runs some burn spells uh, to keep your opponent's creatures in check, and I especially wanted to talk about Fiery Prophecy because that one is huge in a ramp kind of style deck because in the late game, Lands are useless, but Fiery Prophecy allows you to bottom those lands from your hand and then instead draw another hopefully useful card like, yeah, just any ramp payoff. Okay, Oliver, no one wants to give you a Pioneer deck as much as I do, but the rules are the rules, and I am playing one of the best decks in the format. I am playing Jun Sacrifice. Don't let the name fool you, it's full of geese and cats, but it's also full of triggers. This deck is usually kind of hard to play because there's a lot of interactions going on, usually around sacrificing your own permanence. You've got removal in the way of Fatal Push and Mayhem Devil that will originally pick down all your opponent's creatures and then eventually will go to face. You've got Cauldron Familiar. Speaking of face, every turn I can block Yamin's creatures, I can sack the Cauldron Familiar, bring it back with the Cauldron, uh, eventually drain him out life that way and make his attacks not very good. And there's nothing better to close out the game than Corvald Fade Cursed, who just becomes huge on the swing. Sometimes I can just one-shot him after a bunch of Cauldron Familiar damage. Yeah, man. Are you ready for the ultimate face-off? Is this the ultimate face? Like, this, this, this is this is where you prove your metal. Look, we have done like eight videos or 10, 20, I don't know how many uh, videos this we've This is recorded. 35. This is 30. That's wild. How oh, time flies. By the way, is this like the ultimate one? This, this is, the this is your last one. Wow. You lose, you die. <laughs> Damn. All um, right. Um, do you have a companion to reveal? You're not sure yet? You haven't looked? I don't have you don't? a companion. Uh, I don't either. Are you ready to roll some dice? Absolutely. Oh, no. Does this mean I win or I lose uh, horribly? This is uh, not good. Okay, well that's better. somehow better. That's uh, actually like more than twice as so good. So I assume you're gonna go first then. Uh, I will. That augurs very well for the budget deck. I mean, I came with the budget deck and you came with the budget die roll. <laughs> yes, I did not spend a lot of money for that die roll. Um, what do you think about your hand? Uh, looks good. This hand looks pretty potent to me. I mean, I've got my game plan, ramp. Luca, huge creatures, win? Oh wow, this is gonna be a good match because I think we're both keeping. All right. Okay, I'm liking this hand. It's got a lot of lands, but I can play the Gilded Goose and then gradually using the Trail of Crumbs, just draw myself into tons of card advantage. And I have a Fatal Push for one of his creatures early to slow him down to get me to this Corvold Fae Curse that will just close the game. Off Carl, to the races? Off to the races. I'm gonna start a race here, Carl. 
the race to how much mana you can generate, and I'm having a head start. Two, three, next turn. Uh, depending on if I kept uh, one ladder or not. <laughs> oh no, did you just wink at me? I did just oh, wink beautiful. at you. Oh, uh, beautiful. Is it my go? It is your go. I'll draw for turn. I will, usually, I'd be happy to use my fatal push here to kill his elvish mystic for what's called fault the bird, it's the old adage, but instead I think I'm gonna develop my board for mana sense because I know Yemen's decklist and I know he has nothing scary on turn three. I know there's no scary three drops, it's when he gets to five that he gets busy. Shock myself. You know the mana races? They're on. I'll play a duck, go to 18, go to the drive-thru, get me some food. It's a sad cake. It's a sad cake. Look, it's so sad. <laughs> it truly is sad. Do you think it's a pumpkin cake? Because like on Eldraine, everyone was just having pumpkins all the time. So, first, wait, what? On Eldraine. Do you think the person got turned into a pumpkin and then got turned into a cake? <laughs> that is not a good time. Oh yeah, I remember the flavor now. All right. The flavor of the cake. Did you eat it? No. You monster. Oh. <laughs> the flavor of the Eldraine card baked into a pie. Okay. Enough flavor All right, talk enough this. All right. Is it my turn? Yes, enough Voltron. Get to it. On top. I'll take a draw. And uh, Goose is kind of scary. So I could remove Carl's Goose here, but I think I'm better off developing additional mana creatures. Uh, I will play a Bala Get Sanctuary. <laughs> Did you not realize it was a land? Uh, I, 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 nah. <laughs> okay. You, you'll hear in hindsight. All right. Um, I'll tap a forest, cast a Gilded Goose, <gasps> and before I get out my fo food token, I'm gonna cast a second one and <gasps> get out two food tokens. This board is so goosey. Whatever that means. Just foodie? <laughs> foodie? Foodie. Oh wow, goosey. so many food tokens. So many sad cakes are gonna start a sad bakery. Alright. Very tragic bakery over here. And that's the turn. What? You, I... you were not wrong. This is definitely the race to who has the most mana. I wasn't kidding, no. Yeah, wow. Alright. Drop a turn? Sure. Sure, why not? Um, I'm gonna play a pathway on the black side. Don't need any red mana yet. I've got a duck for that. Um, I'm gonna tap two and play a trailer cramps. Are we racing to... I was about to say that you're behind in the food race and you've caught up. But you're up on the duck race, uh, on the goose true. race though. Um, I get my second food and I will not attack with my gilded goose. That's a wise choice. I know. All right. My turn? Yep. I'll on tap. I'll upkeep and I will take my draw. In contrast to you, I do need red mana, Carl. So I will play my pathway on the red side. Very cleverly done. And I will... You know what? Yeah, you got a goose to block. I'll sacrifice one food. All right. And cast a Luca. Ooh, yeah. How are you doing in the cat race? <laughs> I I'm unfortunately have no cats. No cats. No cats. Um, Luca resolves. All right. Um, that's a big cat. I'll minus Luca. It'll... What are you targeting? So I'll exile a creature I control and then reveal cards from the top of my library until I reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. I'll exile this one mana creature in the Gilded Goose. No, you won't. Uh, I will respond to that. I will... Go to your level, bow down to your level on the food race. Uh, sacrifice a food with my Gilded Goose to create a black mana. I will attempt a fatal push. Yeah, You're targeting sure. Goose. It's fatally pushed and... How do you push I a guess... Goose? Do you jump really high? <laughs> yeah, you gotta jump and then push it down. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think this fizzles then, right? Because, yeah, it only has one target. All right. Um, so the fatal push is annoying, but not terrible because Carl doesn't have the creatures to attack my Luca with. This way he doesn't pressure my Luca at all and I can just reactivate him next turn. And should that fail again, I don't care. I'm just gonna take up Luca. Like, as long as this Luca is in play, I'm, I'm feeling confident. Go ahead. All right, uh, that's still a very dangerous Luca. I'll draw for turn. Okay, Yemen, I need stuff to do because you are gonna get a Dragon Lord of Tarka real soon. So what I'll do is I'll uh, get my red mana with a Haunted Ridge, it comes untapped because I have two uh, non-lands. And then I will pay two to get a, another trail of crumbs. <laughs> like the full, the forest, there's just crumbs everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you... I'm such a messy eater. <laughs> um, it enters the battlefield with a food token. And then I'm gonna use trail of crumbs. Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. 
If you do, look at the top two cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put into your hand, put the rest at the bottom of your library in any order. That card's so fun to activate. It's, <laughs> it's, it just feels it's, so good. It's so fun, but editing this is gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> um, I'm gonna attack Gilded Boost. Sacrificing <laughs> Gilded <Gilded> Boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I'm eating too much sad pie. I'm gonna sacrifice one of these sad pies uh, for the floating green mana, and I'm gonna pay one to trigger one of my trailer crumbs. Makes sense. It does. I'm gonna show you Witch's Oven. That's a good card in combination with those other cards you have there. <laughs> yes. Um, and then with the floating green mana, I'm gonna try to catch up on the goose race. All right, catching up on the goose race and the food race. I and the trail of creme race, but losing on the cat race. Yeah, true. Um, I do get two trail of crumbs, two foods, two gilded goose, wow. It's like I try to print something and I press too much because the printer <laughs> yeah. wasn't printing and it doubled everything. <laughs> um, and I'll pass the turn to you. All right, untap and draw. All right, all right. Um, I will cast an Arboreal Grazer. Very good magic card. I, I won't put anything in, into play. <laughs> Not a very good magic not card. Not a very good magic card. You know what is it? It blocks my Gilded Goose. It does. Uh, not for very long though, because I'd like to exile it. Oh no, you're feeding it to the cat. I'm feeding it to the cat. All right, go ahead. What you got on the top of your library? Oh, oh no, my geese. <laughs> your geese. Uh, that's, a, that's a good one. That's convenient, I would say. Um, so the other cards go to the bottom of my library. Yep. And then a Tarka. So I may choose any number of target creatures, any any creatures or planeswalkers on the battlefield. Yep. I'll choose these, those two. <laughs> really? You don't want to target your Luka. And then I can split the damage any way I want. I could do 4-1, for example. Oh, how are you going to spice things up? One wouldn't do it because it's a 0-2. Yeah, um, I'll do 3-2. The okay, tough that, that's, that's fair. Spicy. But I'll still swing in with the Elvish Mystic. Oh, down to 17. 17. Uh, and I guess for good measure, I'll play this forest. Okay, and you have one card left in hand. One card left in hand. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Dragon Lord Attack is huge. She is. I will untap, draw a card. That was a good card. I'm going to play a Blight Step Pathway on the black side. I'm gonna tap four and pay a oh, finding no. of the old gods. Oh. You know what, Dragon Lord Atarka can't dodge? The old gods. I'm going to target Dragon Lord Atarka with it, destroying it, and my saga has one chapter. Poor Atarka. <laughs> Poor Atarka. She did not last long. Nah, she didn't. Um, but it is now your turn. Food! Oh, you're making it with the goose. <laughs> it's food time. At end of turn. Um, and then I'll head into my turn. All right, um, I guess first things first, I'll plus this Luca. All right, what you got on the I'll top of your library? I'll exile the top three cards of my library. Uh, Hopefully they're bad. One, one of them is a creature that oh, I can now cast. Oh, you play them. I guess I'll just pay the cost. You don't have any creatures, so I'll sacrifice a food. You really want that one damage, don't you? Uh, I do, but I also need the second red mana, actually. Uh. Uh, so, yeah. Quartzwood Crasher, coming in. You're gonna have to get that one a read, because I don't think anyone's played against this before. Ah, uh, maybe an Ikoria Draft. So it has Trample, it's a 6-6 six, six for five. Trample, all right, nice stats. But whenever one or more creatures you control with Trample, deal combat damage to a player, create an XX Green Dinosaur Beast Creature token with Trample, where X is the amount of damage those creatures dealt to that player. So that just gets bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger every turn. Uh, I hope you have more Bindings of Old Gods, because things are gonna get Dinosaur-y. dinosaur, -y. dinosaur -y. And they're also going to get Mystic right now because... <laughs> You're going to cut a 16. Down to 16. I'm telling you, if you just keep killing my creatures, 16 turns. <laughs> yeah, 16 turns to go. Go ahead. Um, I will untap. I'll draw. And my Binding of the Old Gods is going to go to 2, which searches my library for a forest card. I believe I have some more Overgrown Tunes in here. So I'm going to play this Overgrown Tune. Would you like to pay 2 life? It enters the battlefield tapped. You, oh, you could I, pay I mean, two, you, you're free to pay two life. I will choose not to. All right. And they don't pay me the big bucks for nothing. They don't pay me the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will, in fact, pay two life. 14. Uh, for a stomping ground. And then 
play a Corvold Fake Cursed King. When it enters the battlefield, I or attacks, I sacrifice another permanent. Whenever I sacrifice a permanent, I put a plus one plus one counter on it. All right, but it doesn't have haste, does it? It does not have All right. Haste. And I will sacrifice the Binding of the Old Gods. But old you're missing out on the third chapter, Carl. Um, creatures having death touch is kind of negated by the fact that my creature's gonna be a 6-6 six, six anyways, <laughs> uh, which is basically death touch. 6-6 um, so six, six is basically death touch. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Emrakul doesn't... Card market feature match, just <laughs> shooting them hot takes. <laughs> Um, and that will be my turn. <laughs> oh, yes. I get to untap with Quartz. With yeah, that's Crash very Order. scary. Let's go. I'll draw. Um, actually, Carl, I'm having... You know, I might be that? having too much fun. <laughs> no, no, no. This is going to be the funnest fun of fun in fun history. The, the funnest kind of fun history? <laughs> yes. Wow, this better be hilarious. <laughs> we better be ecstatic. Uh, I'll, I'll float a red mana. Okay. I'll sack this food. And then I'll Luca away this goose. <laughs> okay. This gets exiled. Uh, and Luca gets to do his thing. One, two, uh, why do I count? <laughs> okay. That's a coincidence. Another quartz Another dinosaur, crasher. yes. All right. I'm not having enough fun yet. I'm not having enough fun yet. Carl, do you remember that floating red mana? <gasps> do you guys know anything that you could do with a floating red mana? You could cast another Luca. <laughs> <laughs> you are having too much fun. <laughs> and I'll minus two that one too and get rid of my Elvish Mystic. Oh wow, yeah, man. What, what do you think my deck could have in store <laughs> for me? Another Quartzwood Crasher. Another Luca, an Elvish Mystic that doesn't get put into play. Forest, a Perforos. Wow. Conveniently, that is a creature. It, it is, and it gives all your creatures hate. Yaman, I hope you are ecstatic. I hope you are jubilant. <laughs> I am having so much fun. I am not amusing myself, this is. All right, Carl, um, so this doesn't have haste. It doesn't, okay. It doesn't have haste. Other creatures I control do have haste. So this one has haste now, so I'll get to swing in. That is a lot of, do I throw away my Corvold here? Um, I mean, you're taking a bunch of damage either way. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going for somehow pulling off a Meat Hook Massacre. I'm going to take 12. 12 damage? That's, that's not enough. You're not even dead. I got to have some more upside, Carl. <laughs> more upside, more fun. So this Quartzwood Crasher is like, nice, 12 damage. So, so this Quartzwood Crasher creates a 12-12. Oh, that goes around a Meat Hook. I don't think I can make a Meat Hook Massacre big enough. All right, and then this Quartzwood Crasher is like, nice. 12 damage by creatures with trample? I'm a create a 12 12. Ooh, Carvel is not gonna get to the right size to block that. We'll, we'll uh, see. How much uh, uh, power damage are you swinging for next turn? Let's see, that's 12, that's 12, 24, 12, 36, uh, plus the 7 here makes 43. Um, we'll see about what the Luca does. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing you can sacrifice here that'll give you more damage. Um, I'm gonna untap. What I have is not big enough, but I do want to see the light, how, how low the life counter goes, so uh, I'll pass it to you so you can attack. Yes! Alright, I'll untap, I'll draw. Oh! <laughs> oh <laughs> is no. it good? No, I don't have enough mana, Carl! <laughs> <laughs> you sacrificed I, all your mana generators! All my mana dorks are gone. But, I have a Perforous! <laughs> Let's go! I'll, put, Let's do this. I'll, I'll activate Perforous. Uh, yeah. For those who don't know, I may put it for three mana, I may put a red creature card, which this is, uh, from my hand onto the battlefield, and I sacrifice it at the beginning of the end step. So basically, like sneak attack. Yeah. So I put another quarter and crack. Wow. You definitely won the race for who has the most dinosaurs. Uh, I, I did. And um, uh, now I can't even exile the Perforous because then this would lose haste, which would make it useless. Mm. So I'm very unlucky here, Carl. Oh no, how sucks to be you. And I'll head into the red zone with all of these. I won't even block. All right, so that's 12, 24, 36, 42, 49. Oh, uh, minus 37. Uh, let's go to game two. Let's go to game yeah, two. Yeah, I think that's wise. Before we get into the next game, we want to tell you about our sponsor, Karma Crow. Unfortunately, it's thanks to them that I had that dinosaur beat down last game because they lend us all the cards we play for these videos because they have over 700,000 cards. Their inventory is huge. If you need your cards quickly and from one seller, then just go to Karma Crow. They have all the cards you need. 
need, seriously. And you just pay shipping once. You do. Crazy. There's a link in the description below. Click it to support Karma Crow and us. And let's see if I can beat you in game two. Yeah, let's get into that. Let's talk about sideboards. Now, this game, Yamin, ends it very quickly with huge dinosaurs. The grindy game is not really the axis we want to play on, so we're going to take out four Trail of Crumbs. They're usually great if the game goes long, but they don't seem to. Plus, I have Deadly Dispute anyways. I still have card advantage engines. Also, my lock of usually blocking these creatures endlessly with Cauldron Familiar doesn't work if all these big creatures are flying or trample. So we're going to take two pieces of that combo out. We're going to take out one Cauldron Familiar and one Witch's Oven. But I'm bringing in some bangers. I'm bringing in one Assassin's Trophy, two Thoughtseize, three Necromentia and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. The Necromentia is really important because if I get his Luka and ha, if I even get a second Necromentia and take out his Corsewood Crashers, Yaman just doesn't have anything to play. It's just Mana Dorks and two Atarkas. So that's kind of like to close him down that way. I also have two Thoughtseize because he usually needs to land his Luka or his Corsewood Crasher. He doesn't have a lot of them in his deck. If I take one out, that's usually all I need to then just grandly close the game. Also, the Assassin's Trophy is just in case he does draw the Luka or does draw the Atarka. It's a two mana that gets rid of seven. So for sideboarding, I'm not bringing anything in. I just don't see anything I want in this matchup. I could bring in like a Torment Crypt or maybe additional removal, but I don't see a reason to weaken my main game plan of just ramping into fat creatures. Back for another one, Carl? Back for another one. Last time got a little too dinosaur-y. Uh, this time I am gonna go first though. Well, ideally, it's not that bad. If I lose, at least we get to send a deck to Oliver. <laughs> True. Oliver's happy. <laughs> yeah. If I win, I look good, but we give Oliver 30 euro. Um, I am not happy. Did it, no, I didn't draw enough cards. Um, still not happy with this hand. I am not keeping this yet. All right, that's music to my ears because <laughs> I'm fully keeping this one. This hand is cute, but it's not what we want to be doing. Uh, it's got mana dorks uh, and a bunch of lands and nothing to cast with them. We can't keep this. Yo, this hand, once again, mwah. Perfect, I'm keeping all day long. So hopefully, my deck is nicer to me now. No, actually I'm fine if you go down to five. <laughs> uh, six, seven. Um, I am probably going to have to keep this. All right, this we can work with. I'd really like a middle ground, like a Mayhem Devil or something to work with, but we have the cat early to maybe attack, get some damage and maybe block his attackers. I do have Kovald to close out the game, and I have a Necromentia, so I can strip his hand from Lucas or maybe Quartz and Crashers. We'll see depending on how the game's going. I will bottom this one. All right. And off we go. Okay, Yemen. Yeah, um, I hope you like triggers, because my deck is full of them. Uh, I'm gonna play Bloom and Mosh. Yeah, that's, it's gonna no, enter... that's no trigger. I... Come on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna play Cauldron Familiar. Oh. I'm gonna gain one life. Yeah. I think the more important part is that you lose one life? I lose one life. That is a very important part. Also, I get a cat. Um, I would like you see, to see you race me on the cat. I race, actually, no, your cats are scarier than mine. Please don't race me on the cat race. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I mean, uh, finally getting back to me about that cat race. I'll go down to 17 voluntarily. Oh. <laughs> voluntarily. And I'll cast an Elvish Mystic. Those are good. They are. And I'll pass the turn. I'll untap. I'll draw a card. Uh, Cauldron Familiar is basically a fatal push if you're not smart enough. Uh, I would like to attack. <sighs> I gotta pass the fatal push check. <laughs> Down to 16. 16. Didn't block, darn it. And um, I'm not doing much this turn. I will play a tapped overgrown tune. All right. And pass to you. That's what I like to hear. Untap. You like to hear pass to you? Yes. In magic? Well, yeah, this is in magic. Yes. Unless my opponent is like on the magic control. Magic. Brunch. <laughs> pass to you. <laughs> Carl, you're hilarious. I'll get back to at you. Wow. With this. Oh, this um, like 20. I lose my advantage down to 20. Well, I'm still four points over you. And then I'll cast a Gilded Goose. Oh no, that blocks really well. It does. It blocks my cat. And not only that, it also creates a food token. Yes, a sad cake. So this time I only have one additional mana dork to uh, deploy. So I have to hope both of them survive. So I have five mana next turn for Luca. But drawing the second Luca. I'm now Thoughtseize proof. Even if Carl has maybe Duress or just any discard spell, my Luca is safe. Go ahead. I will untap. I'll draw. Yeah, man, how many lands do I have in play? Two. Uh -huh. oh, so this no. comes into play untapped. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I don't know if you were expecting this, I'm gonna Necromentia Dude, you. No. Um, I was expecting. <sighs> so I choose a card name other than basic land. 
and I search my opponent, target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with that name and exile them. The player shuffles their library, then creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token for each card exiled from their hand this way. That... What do you think I'll name? If Carl names Luca here, this is looking bad. It's a really tough choice here because if I name the wrong target and he has the other one in hand, then he just plays it and I have to deal with it. And I'm going to name the Luca and my thinking here is that Corsu Crasher comes alone. I just have to kill one of them, that's it. But if he has a Luca, he can minus twice. So if I name the Corsu Crasher, he could get a Tarka. If I kill a Tarka, he could go get another Tarka. If I name the Atarka, he could name Quartzer Crasher, then go get another Quartzer Crasher. So I'm gonna name the Luca because it technically comes strapped onto two creatures. Luca, uh, I would like to see your hand. Would you, why don't, okay, no, first, I, why you're right, first. Um, first. You know, maybe. Your graveyard, no Lucas. No, no, okay, let's, no. let's look in your library. Oh, that's one Luca. Oh, that's two Lucas. Did you board out your Lucas? Maybe. I boarded out all of my loot. Yeah, I mean, can I see your hand? No, no, oh, no, no. No, no, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get two Dude, zombies. I, I was Thoughtsy's proof. Thoughtsy's <laughs> duress, anything. I don't care. I could have had a Luca next turn. But now you don't. No, uh, don't. You do get two zombies. Uh, I have them here for you. Nice uh, that you at least provided the zombies. Yep, at least I'm a zombie provider. Goodbye, Lucas. That's still a lot of beatdown. I just gave you a beatdown plan. Oh, yeah, um, sure. And I'll pass the turn to you. I will untap without any Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, draw. I'll play forest. Ooh, that's five mana. It Do you is. want to play one of your Lucas? <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, nice. Um, no, that was mean. <laughs> it was. I'll attack with my zombies. Yep. I'll go to 16. Evenly matched. And I will pass the turn. I will drop a turn. I'll play a Dark Borg Pathway. And I'm going to not attack because you have a 0 2 flying duck. I do. Um, what I will do is play a goose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I was a bit scared. Like, you. you <laughs> what I will do. What I will do is. <laughs> Is also get a food. All right. Um, and I can't attack, so I'll pass the turn to you. All right, end of turn. Yes. Awakening of oh, that's Valakut. Valakut's pretty awakening. Valakut. The cards I get from the Valakut's Awakening have to be good because I got stripped away two Lucas at the same time, so I don't have a lot to work with here. I will put two cards from my hand on the bottom of All my All right, you don't want them. I don't want them. And then I will draw three cards instead. No, oh, that's a, such a good payoff. It's like Ancestral Recall. <laughs> yes. It's so good. It's like a three man Ancestral Recall. <laughs> that makes you discard cards. Crazy card. All right, uh, still my turn? Uh, well, this is my turn. Now it, it's yeah, our it's, turn actually it's now. Our turn. Yeah, all uh, right. But now it's your turn. All right, I'll on top. And I will take a draw. Can't stop, won't stop. Zombies stop. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I will. Take four. Take four. Down at 12. Pew, 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 pew. Um, and then I will cast an Elvish Mystic. All right. <laughs> I, I was doing the Carl impression of, and then, <laughs> and I, then will, I will yeah, yeah, um, play a tapped stomping ground and pass the turn. Okay, you've got a lot of mana. Um, I don't remember any of your creatures being good, at least not the ones that are fatal pushable. So in this case, I think the best I can do is Fatal push one of your zombies? I mean, otherwise you'll just get beaten down for four every turn. Yep. So if the mana dorks stick around, I might be able to cast a Tarka next turn. I will drop a turn. Okay, I've got to block that zombie somehow. So I'm going to sacrifice a food. Goodbye, food. And pay five. Yep. This is generating a red. And I'm going to play a Corvold Faker's King. That's an expensive Corvold, actually, with the food and the... Extra sack, but I guess Corvo is just also. It's, it's a 5 5 that gets bigger. Um, I am going to sacrifice my Cauldron Familiar. That, that's kind of rude to the cat, but. It's made to be sacrificed. Wait till you see another card <laughs> in my deck. Uh, Corvo's gonna go up to a 5 5. Sure. And I'll pass it to you. All right, end of turn. It's. Oh, can Food I. Food making I, time. Yeah, can I throw it onto the battlefield again? Yeah, go ahead. I'd like to. 
practice my card throwing skills. No, oh, it landed on, under your control. It's mine. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'll untap and I will take my draw. Um, Carl. Can't stop. <laughs> we'll zombies. stop attacking this. That's super suspicious. Um, you have a four damage spell. I can sniff it up from here. I can smell the burning. I'll go to ten. All right. Um, down to ten. I, I actually don't have a four damage spell. You're just really good bluffer? Uh, Either that, dude, bluffing in magic is such an underrated topic, but this is not this for is, today. Yeah, for another, maybe we'll make a short about it. I expect next video is like next week's video. Don't make promises we can't keep. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, yeah, don't expect Oh, you're videos. taking two? Don't expect videos ever. <laughs> ever again. I'm taking two, and I'm uh, casting oh, Dragon Lord. That's so much bad. Tarka. Oh, that's not good. If, if you blocked, I could have also killed I the see. Goose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been very nice. Ding, 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 five on Corvold. Um, that's... I... Wow, you hard cast it. You actually hard cast it. I did. Woohoo, yeah, man. Without needing a goose, even. Goose still chilling, making the food. Yes. Providing for the family. It's looking good for Oliver. And it's looking good for all of my creatures, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, that joke's for you. Um, I'll untap. I'll draw for turn. Dude. <laughs> what do I do? Um, I'm gonna cast a deadly dispute, sacrificing my now useless goose. Sure. To draw two cards and create a treasure token. Made by card market. Made by card market. What a beautiful token. It has trample. It does. Dude, imagine if I have a quartz wood crasher. <laughs> <laughs> well built this deck is. I'm just gonna play a Gilded Goose. Yeah. It's gonna get a food. I'm gonna play a Witch's Oven and pass the turn to you. Not looking good for you, is no, it? No, it's looking very bad. This might be my last turn on this table. I'll untap. I will take my draw. You know what? I thought this deck wasn't good, but I'm actually getting trounced by it. There's no way I can beat this. Um, I will actually. I do have the mana for this. Are you playing another dinosaur? Um, Are you playing another dragon lurker target just to show off? No, no, no. Uh, I'm, I, I, I couldn't use these mystics because I need to attack with them for lethal. But that I drew another land, I can cast a t turn timber symbiosis. <laughs> looking at the top seven cards of my library. Yeah, man. Um, what is it? Fame has made you opulent. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, just to flex, I will put in an Arboreal Grazer. <laughs> You've been corrupted by success. If it has converted mana cost or less, it enters with three plus one plus one counters. Cool. So now that the Grazer... The biggest sloth nice. I've ever seen. And then, Oliver is myth with me in spirit, right? He is. So this is us. He's tapping the lines with you. And then, we will be attacking with all of our creatures. I'll block here? Yeah. I'll take lethal. Good Let's game. send Oliver a deck. <laughs> Carl. Yes, Yamin. You made fun of me for attacking with my Elvish Mystic, didn't you? Yes, I did. And in the end, it was exactly lethal. <laughs> it was exactly lethal. lethal. <laughs> All right. Then big brain plays Yamin Kauf. Anyways, thank you, Oliver, for submitting your deck. We loved it. I hated it a little bit, but we're sending it to you. Let's, Look at your mailbox. Yeah, let's go. I'm so happy sending this stuff out. It's, it's just more fun. Actually, we're doing it again tomorrow. Tomorrow? MTG Malone, this time File Not Corrupted, watch someone play against our guest of the month to see if we can send out a second Pioneer deck. If you want to see any specific deck being played in the Card Market feature match, then don't forget to leave a comment below. Yeah, and while you're down there, please click the sub button. Most of you guys are not sub, and we really rely on the subs to grow the channel. And with that being said, we'll see you tomorrow. 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 To. Morrow.